In the year 2140, women became the dominant gender and took control of society, allowing them to push humanity into rapid development through discipline, peace, and superior technology. Instead of living in cities, they established a colony in the countryside, and an AI housekeeper takes care of all household chores, such as cooking, checking the owner's health, and making new clothes. There is no violence and fines are issued for minor offenses, such as using the wrong bin. Thanks to all this, the average life expectancy is now 150. Their currency is social points, which are earned for obedient behavior and lost for bad behavior. Breaks are also made just for hugs. History teacher Rada tells the class what the world was like when men ruled society. They brought only hatred and violence, which led to wars and climate change. Then, in 2030, during the conflict between the U.S. and North Korea, some scientists developed a virus to wipe out all U.S. military personnel. However, the virus quickly spread to other parts of the world and killed 99% of the male population. Then the women took over and reversed all the damage done by men making the earth a better place to live. Today, male children are extremely rare, and when one is born, he is sent to the slums. The male population is considered apes because they have little intelligence, are dirty and only interested in intercourse and violence. They also only live about 30 years. Mila is curious about the slums and Rada takes the girls on a class trip. Slums are old cities with very basic technology and access to only basic necessities. In these slums lives Gera, a man who is desperate to get nasty with a woman. There is also the Baron, the leader of the slums. He wants to start a rebellion against women and often gives speeches to get the other boys to support him. Today's speech is interrupted by the arrival of Rada and her class, and the men are enraged to find they are being treated like a zoo. One of them pulls down his pants as a joke, but the girl takes it as a greeting and responds by lifting her skirt. The men get excited. So Rada sends the girls back to the bus, only to discover that Mila is missing. Rada runs off to find Mila and finds her staring at a duck that has never seen an animal before when they are banned from the colony. Gera surprises them by suddenly killing the animal, and when their screams get the man's attention, Gera immediately hides them. When the man is gone, Gera kisses Rada, who panics and whistles for help. The noise gives Gera a headache, but also reveals their location and soon the men find them. They are taken to meet the Baron who decides to have a punching contest, and the winner gets to do it with the women. Wanting to protect them, Gera takes part in the competition and becomes upset when his opponent turns out to be a giant. Gera's jab is weak and does nothing to the man who immediately responds with his own jab. Luckily, he is slow and Gera quickly dodges him, causing the Baron to fall instead. With everyone distracted, Rada and Mila run back to their bus which has a force field that stops the guys from creating them. As the girls escape by bus, Gera also escapes as Baron's men want to punish her. Sometime later, the bus stops next to a slum to collect batteries, and as it starts, Gera reveals that he is hiding in the battery barrels. She meets Yuli, a bus owner who works as a seed guard, meaning he is one of the privileged few men who impregnate women. The bus is on autopilot and can't stop, so Yuli agrees to let Gera out when they reach the colony. As they talk, Yuli drinks a lot of Gera moonshine and gets so drunk that she ends up jumping off the bus into the forest. Still determined to avoid the Baron's men, Gera Yuli wears a spare uniform and pretends to be the new seed guard. Moments later, Gera arrives at the Two Hills colony, where an invisible barrier opens to let him in. She gives him a tour of the place and Gera is surprised to see how many girls are excited to be with him. That evening, on live television, Gera bites the holy apple and vows to give birth to healthy and intelligent children. He wants to get to work right away, so he is taken to a reproduction room and meets a woman who has no interest in him at all. Her frustration grows when suddenly a pipe is attached to her groin and begins to milk her. To distract himself, he thinks about Rada, while Rada also thinks about him while using the toy. The next day, Gera is taken to the breeding ground where beautiful women take care of the seed nurses. Gera likes to pamper herself with good food and massages all day, but all this attention makes her stiff. He rushes to the bathroom to find relief in his hand, but it sets off the alarm. It turns out that both self-help and intercourse are illegal in the colony. Meanwhile, Rada and her family are in the local court because Mila told the authorities about what happened on the class trip. 
and now they have to find out if Radha and Mila are guilty. Radha is nervous and tells her best friend Aya about the kiss, but Aya assures her that no one will find out. Mila's mother Vera tries to blame everything on Radha, so Radha counters by saying that they went to the slums because Mila asked and shows her AI recording as proof. It looks like Radha might win, but Aya interrupts to tell everyone about the kiss. All the women are disgusting, and Radha is punished with 80 hours of community service, while Aya is punished with 20 community service points. Back at Yuli, he goes to the slums and gets help from Gera's grandfather, who tells him to keep his identity a secret. Yuli is later introduced to a baron, who immediately realizes that Yuli is keeping secrets and breaks his finger. The baron also asks for his pants, and when he takes them off, everyone is impressed by his manliness. Now Baron is the second largest man in the area. Later, after the haircut, Yulia is approached by one of the few slum women who offers to take care of her finger. Out of jealousy, the Baron informs the giant that Yuli is trying to steal his wife, so the giant invites Yuli to strike. As all the locals gather to watch, the giant opens the battle with a powerful blow that knocks Yuli to the ground, but to everyone's surprise, he quickly gets up. Yuli then kicks the giant in the back with shocking force and knocks him out. Now he can get down and dirty with a giant woman. In the community, seed keepers are walked around and told about all the rules they have to follow, like asking permission to fart and enter the pot. Finally, they reach the statue of Greta Thunberg, who is considered a goddess here. While everyone is distracted praying, Gera gets fed up with all the rules and convinces some guys to go out and have fun. There is an outlet to the sea nearby so they rush there to catch fish. At this point, the others notice that Gera's legs are unshaven and he is carrying lighters, both of which are forbidden. Instead of doubting his identity, they think that it is part of the rebellion of Gera and are impressed. The group have fun together in the water and build a fire to cook fish, but the smoke sets off the fire alarm and a false cloud falls on them. When they return to the center, they are told that their punishment will be a trip to the Patriarchate Museum for retraining. Later. Gera tries to make a cocktail, and the gesture triggers its own happy wake-up call. He then tries the other hand and nothing happens, confirming that their movement is reading the ring they are forced to wear. Now guys can spread their hands in private. The next day, Gera is getting a massage when he suddenly realizes that his sister is Radha, who was sent here as a punishment. Shocked, Gera pretends to hurt her and is immediately taken away. Later, Gera's rebel group is taken to the Museum of Patriarchy, where a series of programs are shown teaching him how things should be under the new rules. Women are the superior race, men should rule, and intercourse is abhorrent. While the boys are being indoctrinated, Radha and her grandmother Zoya watch from afar and laugh at Gera's clumsiness. Zoya mentions that Gera is cute and asks Radha to protect her identity instead of revealing it. As the boys go back to breeding, Gera teaches the others that they only saw a lie and that this desire is normal. One of the men gets too excited at the idea and asks Radha to strip, but before things can escalate, Gera steps in and sends the man away. Radha is grateful, but continues to tell Gerald to get out of town, or else he'll blow his cover. Yuli became very popular in the slums. The Baron thinks he is losing his power and orders his chief Chrysa and a group of his men to kill Yuli. The group asks Yulia to come with them to look for supplies, which should be a trap. However, Yuli impresses everyone by being great at her job and finding lots of food. Chrysa keeps trying to attack him, but her hits do no damage. Suddenly, they are found by an enemy gang called Squirrels, but Yuli scares them all away in seconds. Even more impressed, Chrysa and the other men decide not to kill him. Meanwhile, it turns out that Baron has a secret relationship with Vera who hears from him about what is happening in the slums. After a passionate night, he decides to look at the profiles of the newest seed keepers and realizes that the real Yuli has been replaced by a primate. He immediately sends out a warning alert to the entire colony, and the terrified Gerald has no choice but to flee. However, when he reaches the borders, he is stopped by an invisible barrier, so now he has to hide. Sneaking around, Gera finds Radha and asks for her help in exchange for all the times she saved him. At that moment, the police begin to arrive in the area. So Radha tries to escape with Gera so that Aya can see her. In the slums, Baron returns to find Yuli alive and demands an explanation from the men. 
Chrysa points out that Yuli saved lives so they want her around, but Yuli says that the slums deserve democracy too. The Baron refuses to cede power, so Yuli gathers the locals around her window to start a riot, demanding that things be done right. The nervous Baron asks Vera for advice, and she tells him to make the audience play by his rules. Finally, the Baron agrees to hold an election so that the people can choose their new leader. After Yuli leaves, Baron asks Chrysa to run in the election as well, hoping that the vote split among his own men will result in Yuli's defeat. That night, all the residents cast their votes in the toilet, and Baron takes it upon himself to mess up the results. In the end, her trick doesn't work. She only has her voice, but Chrysa wins the election with 18. Yuli has only turned 16, because many men still don't trust an outsider. In private, Chrysa agrees to be Baron's puppet. After returning to Rada and Gera, they hide in Zoya's house. When Vera's assistant comes to inspect the house, Zoya hides the duo in a closet with their illegal pet. As Vera's assistant begins to search the house, the cat sneezes and blows their cover. Zoya hits the assistant on the head before they are caught. Next, Zoya shows off her old bike and tells Gera to cross an invisible barrier because only objects moving over 80 kilometers per hour can pass it. At that moment, Rada's mother, Elena, catches them, so Zoya knocks her down for the duo to escape. The two get on the bike and take it to the limit as fast as they can, which luckily works and lets them get through the explosion. The crash destroys the bike and their clothes, but luckily they brought spare parts. Then they make a fire to spend the night in the forest. The next morning, Gera catches a squirrel for breakfast, but Rada, who has lived a vegetarian life, is so shocked to see the roasted animal that she screams. This attracts the attention of some nearby men who immediately come after them, so Raiden and Garen run away as the boys shoot arrows at them. Unfortunately, Rada trips over a broken tree and injures her leg, and this delay allows the men to capture them. The two are taken to the slums where Baron tries to get too close to Rada and is stopped by Gera. The other men also want a chance to be with Rada since they are supposed to be Democrats now. So Chrysa decides to have a slapping contest with Rada as the winner. Later, the Baron lies to Vera and says that he did not see the escapees. Sometime later, Yuli visits Rada to convince her that the slums are great. But Rada shares all the advantages they have at two hills and changes Yuli's mind with a hug. They decide to run away together after everyone has gone to sleep. Outside, Chrysa gets the locals to vote on a new constitution, reading only the finer points keeping the rule to hand over leadership to the Baron within two weeks a secret. Everyone gets excited and votes for it without knowing the truth. In the middle of the night, Yuli meets Rada and they wait for everyone to fall asleep. He shares a drink with her, which immediately stuns her, and he tries to take advantage of her, revealing that he does not want to leave. When Gera arrives, he finds a crying Yuli and learns that Rada kicked her in the groin to escape. As Gera runs off to find Rada, Yuli confronts Baron and Chrysa and announces that she is now the new leader. After a long search, Gera finds Rada sitting near a fire in the forest, so he approaches her cautiously, saying that he won't do anything to her if she doesn't want him to. He then shares the fried chicken and Rada is shocked at how good it tastes. Suddenly, Rada theorizes that if eating meat is so good, intercourse must be even better, so she agrees to do it with Gera. Just as they are about to start, they are interrupted by Elena and two guards who promptly arrest them. On the way back to the settlement, Gera is shot with a tranquilizer gun. When they reach two hills, Elena asks Vera to forgive Rada and offers Gera in exchange for Vera to publicly punish her. Vera believes that this is good for her political career. The council then holds a meeting and decides to execute Gera. Later, Gera wakes up tied to a chair. The women give him a special injection and make a last wish. So Gera says goodbye to Rada. Rada, moved by these words, runs to him and kisses him. Unfortunately, this is just a vision he has in a prison cell where his thoughts are controlled by highly advanced machines. His fantasies are played out on television to let everyone know how bad men are, and the illusions even run commercials. Meanwhile, Aya goes to see Rada and shows her Gera's vision of their kiss, causing Rada to go to the other seed guardians and convince them to help her save Gera. Soon they all arrive at the council to ask for Gera's freedom. Meanwhile, Gera receives another injection and sees a vision of a glowing wheel, 
deciding that his destiny must be a plastic bag so that he can fly freely. Seeing this, the other seed keepers incite cruelty against the women and threaten to boycott seed production until Gera is released. Vera comes out and tries to prove that Gera is a primate who does not belong to civilization, but no one believes her because her thoughts are fragile, like her current opinion of Rada and herself at the end of Titanic. Unwilling to lose seed production, Vera offers Gera release, but only if someone takes responsibility for her and her future actions, and Rada volunteers to do so by taking the apple oath. Elena does the same to protect her daughter. Later, Rada goes to the execution chamber and finally carries Gera out to take her to the inn. Gera tries to take the opportunity to mess with him, but Rada leaves, not in the mood after all the commotion. Moments later, Rada returns and kisses Gera before they finally get busy. But as soon as they are done, Rada goes to the bathroom to finish the toy. Gera follows him and tries to apologize for failing, but suddenly wakes up and realizes it was all a dream. While Gera tries to understand all the machines in the house, Rada and Elena come to explain some things. In the ring, he has 300 social points. If he breaks the rules, he loses points. When he reaches zero, everyone is punished. Gera immediately loses 13 points for not finishing breakfast and cursing. Rada and Gera leave together for the day and walk around the colony, where Gera is constantly discriminated against as a primate. They join the volleyball match, but Gera's competitive spirit is not normal here and makes the girls fight each other. At the same time, Elena decides to run for colony leader in the next election and begins to buy the votes of the seed owners. She brings them many gifts and promises to legalize intercourse if they win, showing them her breasts as proof. In the slums, Yuli finds a letter from Gerald, who explains that he ran away with Rada. Enraged, Yuli breaks the table and gets drunk. While fooling around in the Baron's office, he discovers a strange lock and breaks it to find the ring that the Baron used to communicate with Vera. Suddenly the electricity goes out and everyone goes to Yuli to find a solution. When she hears that Baron had connections in town, she tries on the ring and speaks to Vera, who immediately stops. At that moment, a bee flies by and Yuli immediately follows it to find the beehive. Honey is scarce at the moment, so Julies brings the beehive to fill the jar, and the bees are stung several times. In the evening, he meets Vera and gives her honey, but instead of asking for electricity, she asks to be sent back to two hills. Nearby, Baron and Chrysa search for food and later find a skeleton with a car and a gun. They then regain their powers and return to the slums, where they regain their power thanks to the weapon. When the squirrels come to fight, the Baron tries to stop them with a gun, but they have bigger guns and are not afraid. To make them leave, Baron gives them Chrysa. Meanwhile, Elena forces Gera to help the dead bird's eggs hatch to improve her image among the local women as part of her campaign. At this point, Everyone is called and asked to watch the news. The group does so and finds Yuli complaining about the men's lifestyle and accusing Gera of getting lost at work. Gera tries to share the truth, but the women do not believe him and reject him. Later, Yuli is welcomed back as the guardian of the seed, and Vera tells Rada to serve Yuli until he is healthy again. Although Rada takes care of Yuli, she admits that she only lied and said those things because Vera forced her to. Rada promises that Elena can help Julie if she stays honest afterwards, and she reluctantly agrees. After Rada leaves, Gera arrives to call Yuli out for her lies, but with all her swearing, her social points drop and she is forced to quit. Yuli just leaves and Gera angrily destroys the apple. Later, when Gera returns to his apartment with Rada and Elena, he is surprised to find the council members waiting. They are here to accuse Gera of destroying the apple a symbol of their society and therefore blasphemy. The video will even be played on national television for all to see. After taking a hundred social points from the wallet, Gera is also accused of harassment. So more points are taken and the wallet reaches zero. The council prepares to throw Gera out, but at the last minute he gets a point from an anonymous donation. At this point, the birds hatch, so a bunch of women start donating points for their help as a thank you. The council has no choice but to leave. Sometime later, Gera puts on nice clothes and tries to flirt with Rada, even giving a point to her bow. But Rada snaps and yells at him, accusing him of always getting her into trouble. As her anger grows, 
She asks him to stay away from her and leaves. Shocked by this, Gera leaves a note on Rada's door and goes to the colony's borders, where she waits until the moment of the hug to give the guard a hug and steal the device. He then disables the barrier and runs out of the colony, so the guard immediately blows his whistle to send a drone after him. Keeping an eye on the drone prevents Gera from seeing the approaching vehicle, causing her to crash into it and end up in the hospital. Rada finds Geralt in his house with a letter of apology and goodbye. Meanwhile, Vera asks Baron to get her husband to attack two hills. The next day, Gerald is better and goes home. So Rada and Elena take him to Vera's maternity mission, during which the next woman to be inseminated will be selected. When questioned by Gera and Elena, Rada admits that she wants to become a mother. As part of the promotion plans, Vera invites Elena to try out all the games at the event, but her plan fails when Elena beats her at every opportunity. Meanwhile, Rada and Aya go to Zoya's secret theater where she plays a bad video to show how real people get pregnant. Rada is horrified as the woman appears to be tortured and quickly leaves. He then meets Gera, who offers to make the child natural instead of waiting for a lottery pick. Rada hates the idea, but Aya likes it and asks Gerald to do it for her. Gera asks Rada for permission, and since she says she can do anything, Gera agrees to do it with Aya later. Next, Everyone gathers to hear about the lottery winners and Rada is surprised to hear that she won. At the same time, Aya takes Gera and tries to repeat what she saw in the video, but Gera calls it crying and leaves. He decides to go back to the event where Rada is giving a speech, but interrupts when he sees himself. To understand his feelings, Rada rejects the lottery win and starts walking towards Gera. Suddenly, a baron and his wife break into an old car. They immediately kidnap Rada and start destroying the whole place looking for more women to mate with, causing chaos and all the women fleeing. After he has Elena and Rada, Baron looks for his payment, but finds an empty chest. He asks Vera to explain, but Vera says she knows too much and has to go. At that point, Vera's guards surround the gang and point their guns at them, so one of the men explodes a milk bottle to distract them. As the gang and Rada escape, the Baron kidnaps Elena at gunpoint and also uses her as a shield to escape. They hide in the mother center where all the seeds are stored. Baron wants to ask for Elena's life, but Elena explains that Vera is happy to lose the competition. Now they are locked there, and in a rage, the Baron begins to blame Vera for everything. Hearing this, Elena offers to take him out if he confesses the truth about Vera to the authorities, and he agrees. Elena and Baron then leave the building with a chest containing all the seed pods. When the guards try to stop them, the Baron repels them by breaking some capsules, allowing him to escape. Back at Baron's men, they capture Zoya and force her to take her to their home, where they let her go and demand food. Zoya takes out a crossbow from her box and aims it to make them friends because she also wants to fight for equal rights. At the same time, one of the gang members, Rada, is almost captured but Gera saves him and they run to hide in a house together. However, the house AI refuses to obey Rada's orders because he and Elena were denied all colonial privileges. They then check the TV and discover that Vera is blaming everything on Gera, so they think she is behind the attack. They want to escape again, but the house won't open the door. Gera and Rada finally get close and share a kiss. The AI in the house tries to tell them to stop, but they just ignore it. This rebellion confuses the system and forces it to reset to default settings. So when Rada hears this, he takes the opportunity to register as a new member of the colony. Now the house obeys and opens the door for them to escape. When the Baron tells Elena about all the illegal things Vera is up to, Zoya and her new gang break into Vera's home and try to attack her. But Yuli defends him and quickly knocks out all the guys in seconds so they can be arrested. Soon the whole army finds security guards Elena and Baron, but luckily they also find Gera and Rada in the old car. After the Baron drops all the capsules in a rage, the Baron pulls Gera outside and beats him for starting this mess, then flees in a car. Worried about Gera, Rada tries to wrestle him from the wheel, causing the vehicle to fall off the road and become stuck in a muddy river. The entire party except Gera is immediately arrested, and Vera celebrates being mean to Yuli while the prisoners are punished for cleaning the Pacific. Later, news broadcasts announced that all the seeds had been destroyed, causing the keeper of the seeds, named Lucius, to cry. 
Suddenly, Gera surprises him and attacks him for betraying him, but Gera convinces him to help if he tells him the truth about Vera and the Baron. Gera then tells him about the obstacle and Lucius reveals that he has a bicycle. They arrive together and, pedaling really fast, reach 80 kilometers per hour, successfully passing through the barrier around the colony. The next day, Gera and Lucius meet with Gera's grandfather and begin planning. Lucius calls one of his seed guardian friends and learns of the punishment in the Pacific. Gera notices that her grandfather has a college picture with Zoya, and hearing that she is alive makes the old man so happy that he brings his laptop to track her whereabouts. Meanwhile, the prisoners are taken to an apple orchard, where Vera reveals that their real punishment is to work there as slaves. Soon, Gera, his grandfather, and Yuli also reach the orchard, but the area is protected by a barrier. At that point, they see the squirrels arrive and are allowed in as they bring more slaves like Chrysa for Vera's plans. Chrysa lies to Baron and says she is happy there because it is better than the slums. He also says that using the dumpsters might be a good idea to escape, and Baron believes him, so he hides in the dumpster. As the squirrels leave, they stop in the middle of the road when they find Gera acting like a drunken tramp. They immediately catch him and take him to Katia, who adopts Gera as one of her bad dogs. Later, Katia takes all her dogs to visit Vera in the orchard, and the women are tied up outside while the women eat dinner. Gera sees Rada and gives him Lucius' ring so he can record the crimes here. In the evening, when Vera and Katia are celebrating with the dogs, Rada sneaks into their tent and tries to record everything. However, the party is interrupted when Yuli recognizes Gera because of her tattoo. Vera pushes him away in disgust, and the movement pulls the curtains away revealing Rada as well. The guards immediately take them out and take the ring, but some pictures of the party reach the colony. Vera has no choice but to return to dealing with the damage. At the colony, Aya shows the leaked photos of Vera and Claudia to the other women, but Vera interrupts her, saying the photos are fake. Both Vera and Aya start biting into the apple to swear they are telling the truth, so Mother Supreme decides to do some research before making any decisions. Now Vera has to rush to her office to destroy all the party supplies she has hidden, but Mother Supreme still wants to explore the environment of the colony. With no other option, Vera orders the orchid to be burned. Meanwhile, Chrysa's lie accidentally turns out to be the truth, and Baron manages to escape when an employee takes him to empty the bins. He jumps out of the vase and runs through the forest, where he meets Gera and Julius's grandfather. In the orchard, Zoya notices that Yuli is interested in Rada and makes him flirt with her. Yuli falls for it and takes Rada to the tent, where she announces that Vera ordered the orchard to be burned. At that point, he is knocked out by Gera, who is also found by the squirrels. The gang prepares to punish Gera and Rada, but they are interrupted by the arrival of a garbage truck, from which the Baron emerges with a gun. He shoots the squirrel and the others retreat in fear giving the captives a chance to break free. Suddenly, Vera presses a button and the entire orchard comes crashing down with a rapid explosion. Sometime later, Vera is chosen as the new leader of the colony. During the ceremony, his celebration is interrupted by some commercials that make him realize that he has been captured and connected to a thinking machine. Mother Supreme never trusted him and imprisoned him as soon as he entered Vera's office. The button was never pressed. The prisoners escaped unharmed. Elena is chosen as the new leader, and Gera and Rada are finally together for the first time. 